How you guys and girls doing today? Tim Shanawan here, and in this video, we are talking about the system override patch notes. Let's do it. What is going on, y'all? Like I always say, I appreciate every single one of y'all stopping my videos. Y'all just aren't subscribers if you are a family, and I appreciate and I love y'all, man. And if you are new to the channel, please make sure to hit that sub and like button. It will make my testicles swell with helium and pride. With that being said, y'all, let's get right into it. So, y'all, the very first thing we're going to get, of course, is the limited time mode called Deja Loot. Deja Loot is a unique take on the Apex games where random is a dirty word. A glitch in the system has caused all the loot to spawn in the same locations every match for a duration of the event. Even the plane path and circle locations will be fixed for this mode, which will change on a daily basis while the loot location stays the same for the whole event. It also features this new equipment type called the Evo Shield, which is when you pick up Evo Shields, it will start out weaker than a common body white shield, but as you do damage to non-down players throughout the match, it can become even stronger than Epic body shields purple evo shields change color as they progress but their perpetual distinctive glow will help you identify them progress also progress also carries over from person to person so look forward to some interesting late game scenarios now y'all this is the extremely interesting thing right here that uh, i'm not i don't know if i'm concerned about it but it, it's it's something and let me know what y'all think in the comments below it says to start the evo shield will be exclusive to deja loot game mode and spawn at higher rates after the event, we'll consider adding the Evo Shield to all matches, so please give us your feedback. That would be interesting to see that. I am really curious to see how that will work in the competitive scene and the casual scene. Uh, it says exclusive event prize track with two legendary weapon skins, 24 event limited premium cosmetic available directly through system override event packs, the Octane Heirloom preview, and you can unlock all 24 system override cosmetics during the event to and unlock the Octane Heirloom set for free oh and there's one more thing i left out the best for last the first week will be played on world's edge and the second week we'll go back to king's canyon this is from march 3rd to the 17th if i did not say that already all right y'all so we're now getting to the meta changes so everybody that was speculating that bloodhound would get a buff you're correct it says designer notes the intent is for bloodhound to use their tactical as they're approaching towns pre-combat versus reacting while in a fight they've increased the scan distance for i the all father by three times increased time to activate from 0.4 seconds to 0.8 seconds and increase the duration of scan from two seconds to three seconds gibraltar is finally getting a nerf to his gun shield because his health is now reduced from 75 and 50. In Crypto's primary weapons will now automatically reload while in drone view. Now that's like a little buff. That's like a little mini buff. Some people say that Crypto didn't need a buff. Some people say he did. I mean, that's not too bad, but we'll see about that. Inventory update. So base inventory slots increase from 8 to 10. The common backpack expands inventory to 12 slots, rare to 14, and epic to 16. Grenade stacks now are reduced from 2 to 1. <sighs> Mm, I mean, see, they're increasing inventory space, so we'll see how that is, but uh, one, light, heavy energy ammo stacks reduced from 80 to 60, syringe and shield cell stacks reduced from 6 to 4, and medkit and shield battery stacks reduced from 3 to 2. Peacekeeper, the mag size has reduced from 6 to 5. They increased the reload time from 2.5 seconds to 2.6 seconds. Uh, increased reload time with, oh, no, excuse me, 2.5 seconds to 2.65 seconds. Increased reload time with empty mag from 3.5 seconds to 3.6. And they slightly increased the scale of the blast pattern from 1.6 to 1.7. So, you know, everybody was talking about how long this Peacekeeper has been busted and broken for, and I have to agree. Let's see if this... um. You know, this uh, update here nerfs it to where people think it should be. Sentinel, the base damage has been increased from 65 to 70 and reduced time it takes to rechamber from 1.85 to 1.75. The Sentinel did need a buff, so I'm happy to see that. Quality of life adjustments, y'all. So we've got the muzzle flash adjustments. Holy Jesus. I am so happy to read that. Reduce the intensity of muzzle flash while aiming down the sight for all weapons except for shotties and snipers. Red dot has been adjusted to the iron sights for the prowler and L-star. Iron sights dot will stay properly centered during weapon sway and bob movements. Y'all, this is something new here. Heirloom crafting. 
We're changing up the heirloom system to make it easier for you to acquire the heirloom you want. Instead of an entire heirloom set dropping at once, you'll now receive what we call heirloom shards. You can use these shards to pick up the exact heirloom set you'd like. The shards will have the same drop rate as the previous system, so that after 500 packs, you will have enough heirloom shards to obtain an heirloom set for the, from the heirloom shop. But don't worry, your existing progress toward the 500 Apex packs will carry over with the Switch. Remember that once a player owns all the heirloom sets, the player will not be eligible to receive more shards until more heirloom sets are added to the game. So, heirloom crafting, y'all. I mean, this is great because how long have y'all been waiting? I've, some people get it off jump. Some people opened it up in like five packs and they had it, man. I've been waiting on my Wraith heirloom since I started playing this game. I've been playing since damn near season zero. I mean, season zero. So let me know what y'all think about that. And there's a list of bug fixes. I won't read them all, but I will read the main points. And that's the first one, which is they fixed the bug for cases where Bangalore would appear invisible when equipped with certain skins. The Apex Overdrive and Killer B skins have been re-enabled um, because now for affected players. So, you know, um, that was a huge glitch. You know, you would see Bangalore running around with like half her body missing. So they fixed that. It says they fixed bugs for cases where full auto mode would be disabled when players equipped the Anvil Receiver hop up while in single fire mode for R301 or Flatline. It says they fixed... Uh, cases from audios watch and skydiving mode would play would continue to play after she lands stability fixes to reduce crashing and script errors and various stability and polish bug fixes from fire and range there's a ton more there's like a good 10 or 15 more bullet points here but those are the main things right there so y'all that is it for this video let me know down below what you think of this man i'm extremely excited i'm happy that um Apex Legends is continuing to try to keep the game fresh and continuously updating us. You know, I remember when the game first came out, you know, people were wondering like where the updates were. We would only get like an update every like seven months. So I'm happy to see that, you know, they're adding events and they're keeping the game fresh. They're trying out different and new things. So let me know what y'all think and I will catch you on the next video. Timson918 is out of here.